Welcome to Electra Online. Calculating the power factor correction all comes down to finding the correct capacitor that's going to be placed in parallel to the original load circuit in order to maximize the impedance and therefore minimize the input current required, required and still provide the correct amount of power to the load. So how do we do that? Well, let's say we have a source, a 120 volt RMS source at 60 cycles, that's typically household circuits, and uh, therefore we can calculate the frequency of 377 hertz. Let's say the power requirement is 4000 watts, and let's say that our circuit had a power factor of 0.8, and that would be a lagging power factor since it's an inductive circuit, that means the current would be lagging. And so we can then say that the cosine of the phase angle, the initial phase angle, is 0.8. And therefore we can calculate the initial phase angle, and here it's 36.87 degrees. And now let's find the resistance, the impedance, and the IRMS, the current provided to the circuit, by using what we know. Well, first of all, we know that the current in a circuit in is always going to be the voltage provided divided by the impedance and the power consumed by the circuit in this case consumed by the resistor in the circuit is going to be I squared times R so in this case that would be uh, yes it would be I squared times times R and that would be the original the original current and the original power provided we do not yet have a capacitor and so what we can see then is that the power is I squared times R, which can also be written as I squared times Z times the cosine of phi. That would be the impedance times the power factor equals the resistance in the circuit. And of course, this is before we have the capacitor, so that I sub L is equal to I. So then we can say we can calculate the impedance by taking the power divided by I squared times the cosine of phi, the, power, the current squared times the power factor, and then realizing that the current is V over Z, we can replace I squared by V squared over Z squared. So we have V squared over Z squared, so we can put the Z squared over there. So the impedance in the circuit is going to be the power times Z squared divided by V squared times the cosine of phi. Well, since we're looking for impedance, we can divide both sides by Z. That gives us one on one side and Z on the other side, so therefore Z will be equal to V squared cosine of phi divided by the power. When we calculate that, we get the impedance to be 2.88 ohms. And then of course, since IRMS is equal to V over Z, that's 120 volts divided by 2.88 or 41.67 amps. That's the current provided before the capacitor is added. And then finally, the resistance in the circuit can be calculated by taking the uh, power divided by I squared. So the power divided by I squared gives us 2.304 ohms for the resistance. So at least before we add a capacitor, we can see that we can calculate the impedance, the current, and the resistance in the circuit. And now the next step would be to find the correct capacitance in order to, to maximize the, uh, what we call the power factor, in order to maximize the impedance and therefore minimize the current required by the circuit. And that is how it's done.